Scheffler and Macrophylla. Size um, absolutely ginormous. I bought these Musifolias after yeah. Monty did his piece on Gardener's World a couple of years ago and they went out of stock the next day. Wow. This is an Alcantaria Imperialis that giant is such pineapple. An awesome plant, that, isn't it? I don't think there's actually any others in the UK. This evening, I've come on a trip out to an exotic garden that I've wanted to show you for quite some time. Huge banana plants, amazing tree ferns, a tropical greenhouse packed full of all kinds of beauties from around the world. This is a garden that I know you'll love. This is my friend Mark's garden, not far away from us here in North Lincolnshire. And the plants that he successfully grows outside here, it really is staggering. It's got some incredible themed areas, a really beautiful shaded tree fern area. This tiki area that I'm in now, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Before I show you the greenhouse, I'll take you on a little tour of the garden and show you some of my highlights. And then later on, I'll get Mark to talk about some of the most incredible plants that he grows here. So let's get cracking. So how's it going, Mark? Good, yeah, all good, thank you. Yeah. Nice one. Nice trip over to Lincolnshire, You've come a long way. Well, about 15 minutes as you know, but <laughs> we'll have a nice formal intro. So I wanted to start off today's little tour in your arid section because you've got a lot of cool plants here. Some I grow, some I don't. Tell yeah. me more about them. Uh, yeah, so this part of the garden was all kind of designed on the basis that um, I wanted to have a specifically arid section and I, mm. I know that there is quite a strong theme to people kind of just putting plants where they want them to go rather yeah. than what fits and so I have tried to put the plants that are happiest together in the same part so being an arid section it literally does get no water other than rainwater. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've got a few sedums that are filled spaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, aloe stritula, uh, stritulars, which have kind of done their thing and they're quite happy, as well as the yucca aliofolia purpureas, yeah, yucca rigidas, yeah. yucca rostratas, yeah. yucca faxonias and rigidas, um, and as well as a couple of hardy cactuses. This is one of only two parts of the garden that does actually get covered yeah um for winter and i literally just put a great big kind of you know plastic sheets up and around just to it. keep the sort of winter wet off it i guess uh, yeah and, it, and it's more just to keep the i mean they'll tolerate wet yeah they'll tolerate cold but they won't tolerate the two yeah especially for sort of months on end which yeah we, so we have a lot here in lincolnshire don't we we don't tend to have it as good as the southern boys now no. um they're probably not looking as happy as they could do it is an area that's been neglected a lot this summer um, it's definitely work in progress like i've got and oh yeah i can see when the cacti go into the ground sort of late next spring it'll definitely i, I it massively up, i massively regret not putting some uh, weed membrane down let's put it let's put it that way yeah that's definitely a battle i face as well but <laughs> at least it gives you options doesn't it for putting more plants in you don't have to dig it out and cut holes in it well and it's, stuff like it's, that. it's about the only area of the garden where you do actually kind of need some some burr ground between the plants because that's how yeah. it would be whereas the rest of the garden's pretty forgiving and as much as Packing you know <laughs> burr soil and you know yeah. you can have some weeds and you don't really see them so but yeah, yeah this this yucca rostrata flowered this year so i'm hoping that means that it splits um, you I actually have, want it to split, do you? Because I know a lot of people that don't, it ruins the symmetry when it flowers. No, doesn't it? But, yeah, I mean, I'm happy for them to just yeah. do their own thing. If it's if it's happy enough to flower, then hopefully it's happy enough to do what it would do naturally. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And you've um, obviously got the space up here for it to branch up, haven't you, and really go for it? Exactly. Which, which is yeah. kind of how I would like it to go. Whether it does or not will remain to be seen. But cool. As gardeners, we all do go on about right plant, right place. But it really is true for. It, I mean, this is the most southern facing driest part yeah so, which is how it was all designed got you so, so even though we're in north lincolnshire and obviously your garden is surrounded by quite tall mature trees this is the sunniest spot this is the spot with the best drainage you've raised it up you've done literally everything you can to give them the best chance of thriving hopefully and absolutely definitely look cool the size of that one yeah Massive, pretty big isn't it? yeah so let's look at an area I think this is the first area that you planted up, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Again, we've so, got more work in progress here, haven't we? Yeah, so this is, again, the, the, the whole idea behind this bit was to be another arid section. Yeah. But it is quite sheltered from the bamboos and the sambucus, so it's probably going to end up more as another jungly area. Yes. Um, and I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do with these dry ones and these more arid plants again. Um, and again, it, it's it's another it's another important part 
and another important factor of gardening is that you can't just put it in and say this will do you have to be responsive to yeah, yeah. to the plants and what they're telling you and i i know full well that if i was to force this area to be arid it probably wouldn't do very well got yeah but around the corner from here this is the area you planted up for quite some time so, so yeah this area is about four years old um so it's kind of expanded it was the first part of the garden that was actually allowed when we moved in it was the old vegetable plot um, yeah. and so i put raised beds in so i could put them at different levels so we've got the uh, parajabayas um that one looks really healthy i've got to say for a, yeah a palm that i'm not massively familiar with but so I know they're on the edge of what we can grow here aren't they they are and again this is its second year in the ground and it is it is thriving it's doing yeah. quite well so we've got Berinda papyrifera there that's, the, that's the blue bamboo yeah um and then this yucca like plant down here so that yeah that specionaria yuccioids that has flowered and split and i could split it again but again i'm quite happy letting it do what it wants yeah um the bamboos have all started to kind of come through Colocasia black magic has done really that really looks well awesome, i've got to say yeah it's pretty cool and there's also metallica in here now these will have to come out for um yeah these will obviously have to come out for overwintering uh, and I don't tend to overwinter a lot. No, I mean, I, we should say though, you have got a full on tropical greenhouse, which we'll look into very soon. There are areas which have been set up in such a way that they don't need to be overwintered, but everything out here is kind of exposed. And again, that has gone into the design of the garden. We have set up lots of different divides and we have put in lots of different areas for climate control yeah, yeah. to make sure that you know there is as much microclimating as possible if that's a word and speaking of microclimating to use your kind phrase there i think this bit really shows off what plants like tetraplanets can do when they've got a bit more shelter their leaves is you know they're not even ripped or anything are they no so that's on a north facing wall but the heat of the house has really kept that quite happy um this is my kind of aurelia area so got fatsy fatsy polycarpia, polycarpia. Got spider's web yeah yeah standard basic fatsia here and again these are maybe four years old and they've just gone yeah. absolutely cuckoo because they're in a really happy place and this is something where i talk about they're a great sort of beginner plant they're very cheap budget friendly and people don't really believe you when they when you say they grow fast i mean for four years from a relatively small plant Four that's years from pretty awesome, isn't it? Four years from a five quid plant from a garden centre. Yeah, that's um, a good return on your investment. Absolutely, isn't it? yeah. Lovely glossy leaves. So, we've seen this area. We've had a quick look. I think people really want to see the main garden. And to me, it's all about this view up here, looking across. One of the things that really strikes me about your garden is you've actually put a lot of effort into the actual design of it. It's got a real sort of theme of these circles running through it. So yeah, the the first. I mean, this was all turf. Um, and the first cut into the ground happened in February 2020. So what you see here now is actually purely for two, two and two, two and three quarter years. That is pretty awesome, isn't it? Um, and yes, there are a lot of structural plants that have gone in. And yes, there is money been spent on the bigger plants. Yeah. But a lot of the plants have also been, they're not all tropical plants. A lot of the plants are tropical looking or mix in yeah. such a way and there is a strong theme I, I designed it to have all the electrics in place all the water in place yes um and having some strong design elements in um i would love to have had a great big jungle but i've got a couple of young kids and my wife was insistent on lawn <laughs> Um, I think to be fair for someone who doesn't have the privilege of having large areas of lawn having the open space it really lets you see everything and you can actually yeah. appreciate things can't you rather than actually pushing between them you've got the space to actually see the euphorbias the palms over there you can appreciate your tree ferns from a distance can't you and it has forced me to have lower lying plants yeah that you can see over so it has made Definitely. me have to think quite a lot about the the framework and the structure of how things are going to sit and how things are going to you know lie in the garden and having low medium and high level planting to try and achieve the look i'm going for and that a lot of cool. a lot of pinteresting a lot of yeah looking on the groups and seeing what people are doing and you know google images and what have you so well i mean one thing looking out i know you've sort of referred to the mature plants and that's something that 
I get a lot of the time. You know, I've got some really big tree ferns. They also take a lot of time to grow. You've got a whole forest of tree ferns, which I'll have a look through very soon. Yes. Tree ferns are obviously slow growing. The Brahea amata, the Mexican blue fan palms there, again, they're very slow growing. But for a few specimen plants like that, they really set the tone. And then behind it, you've got the large miscanthus grasses and the bananas, which bulk up really quickly, don't they? So not every plant's a really expensive sort of specimen, is it? Not at all. It's a proper it's, mixture. It's, it's about picking your theme and running with it and deciding what you want to do. And I, I, I had a bit of a challenge with this garden in as much yeah. as, you know, this area where the tree ferns are, this is a southern shaded dappled shade area under yeah. really big established trees of which i didn't want to lose the height and no the surround so i kind of had to think right well i want tree ferns yeah what will be the most appropriate place for them and of course yeah. you think about you think about dixonia artata you think about what they do they they grow under a canopy yeah yeah and yeah and, and it seemed like the most natural place to put them and i mean even if i this is my first tree fern and when I, people come to the garden and I talk to them about it, I explain to them how not to do it. Yes. <laughs> this was my first tree fern. And the first winter I did what everyone told me to do. I cut all the, the Got you. cut everything yes. off, narrowed the crown yeah. um, and left it exposed in full sun, didn't water it fully. And now you look at how small and pathetic and even the color is so different. They take a while to recover, don't they? We're yeah. talking years and to recover. I, and, and it's just, you know, it, it was my trying to make it work yeah. rather than allowing it to do what it where it wants to be. Yeah, yeah. So since then, I've never actually removed any of these. Yeah, and that's um, something we'll see later on, is it, as we go through the more sort of jungly part back there. Yes. That you do sort of leave things to it. Um but I think your garden's so much better for it. And just for contrast, there's one of your more recent tree ferns up there that went in the ground last spring, I believe, was it? Yes. Yeah. Um, and that one, the fronds are easily twice the size, probably three times the size, so definitely very healthy, isn't it? And and everything's going through a second flush too. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So they are bouncing every, back, aren't they? They are, but even with the utmost care and respect you can give to them, you can, yeah. I think you can overdo it. And I think you have to realise that these plants are considerably tougher than we give them credit for D definitely as long as you sort of pay attention to like the basic needs if it needs better shelter if it needs extra moisture if you do that then they can cope through you know cold winds a lot more sun than you might expect definitely well i mean our our um our climate is not too dissimilar to where they come from no no but if you cut the tops off them and wrap them in hessian and expect them to sweat the way through a relatively yeah. mild winter if, with yeah if you don't give them the water that they need then yeah they're going to struggle aren't they i saw a post the other day on one of the groups about is everyone stopped watering i mean it's still t-shirt weather <laughs> well for both of us anyway <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it's not even october yet i mean i don't want to necessarily think about summer being over because it tends to mean it's more time inside definitely and for me it's stretch out as long as you can if you can get away till you know late november without protecting anything then yeah i mean that's, I, that's my, awesome. my my birthday's 5th of december last year i was still watering the tree ferns because we had a really 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 mild december yeah definitely yes um and it's so easy for people to say it's winter i'm not going to water them but you do have to be reactive and seeing what some of the you know older heads on the group are doing and seeing mm. how they're treating their plants still i think is very important because yeah you can do what i did which was not water them cut the tops off narrow the crown um and you know when you compare a mollycoddled plant with mistakes to a yeah. plant that's been allowed to do its like own this one thing. Just here, you've literally left this one to it absolutely giving and it some extra water it's, it's half it. the size and it's three times as happy definitely but before we get too ahead of ourselves should yes. we follow the route back around here absolutely we'll pass along your little greenhouse and walk through your australasian section yeah so all, the, the gardens are primarily based on places that i've been to yeah um and i really like the framework of the japanese garden yes i can tell so <laughs> the japanese garden is made up of sago palms um low-lying conifers the sumac there um, I've got some umbrella pines, um, an aurelia, and Japanese loquat, as well as yeah. some kind of hard landscaping, which is reflective of the Japanese idea. Um, and I'm quite fraught with the whole Japanese style because 
I want it to be a jungle, but there aren't many Japanese jungles. Yeah. <laughs> so, Other than the obvious sort of yeah bamboo yeah. sort of Asian reference, then yeah. Uh, but again, it's difficult with uh, naturally with our type of gardening because we want to be quite unrestrained and yeah and have as big a plants for you know and actually in this area you want to have the bare gravel you want to have the lines yeah. and the the and symmetry to a degree for, um, for me just a couple of touches like the pagoda there yeah a couple of sort of structural elements it instantly gives it that sort of japanese vibe and you can sort of get away with a few you know your planting doesn't need to be strictly japanese whatever not at all to me they definitely sort of give that theme i mean when we talk about themes obviously this is set right next to the enchanted tiki room <laughs> so we're yeah. quickly taking a so trip this across is, the ocean this is we? kind of my tiki shed which yeah. if there's any disney fans out there will realize it's all based on the enchanted tiki room and my <laughs> wife and son are pretty disney mad and they've kind of taken me on that journey as well so there, there are very i would be fair to say there are strong design elements and i have kind of gone very much with them but the, i think the garden's better for it oh definitely i think there is an argument that if you've got a smaller garden you're often best off sort of concentrating just on one theme and sticking with it but if you've got a large garden we won't look in there too close. We'll come back peak. to the greenhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Lifting the skirt. I think if you've got a larger garden, then you can definitely have separate areas. And I think your garden really shows how you can have multiple themes. But as long as you've got a strong design, they definitely fit in well. And everything works sort of cohesively together, doesn't it? Yeah. So going round to what I consider to be Australasia. Again, we've got the tree ferns. I'm 6'3". George is about 8 foot. Well, 8'2 um, eight, eight at the minute. I'm wearing two, my, my yeah. high heels today. Um, and these these tree ferns are, you know, you can walk under the fronds really quite easily here. Yeah. Um, and that, that again, it, it, it's putting them in the right place. Um, probably my favourite plant in the entire garden oh, I've here. I've got to say, I probably agree with this. Scheffler and macrophylla. The size um, of those leaves. Absolutely ginormous, really structural leaves looking fantastic i've got to say i've got one of these mine has really struggled this year it looks really unhappy it's drooped a bit even though i've given it some extra water yours is a younger plant but just the size of those leaves yeah and again we've got to mix that with you know sheflera digitala sheflera taiwaniana yeah metapanax um All and the cool leaves this is here. a bit of an indication as to what happens with the you know yes so this is a plant back here which has literally been left to do its own thing and that looks awesome doesn't it uh, but the, the point is that people will come round and they'll say why have you not tidied it up and us yeah my response quite simply is well people aren't walking around the rainforest in tasmania cutting no. tree fern fronds off i think that looks cool like that really i mean what what i've done on some of mine i've actually trimmed them back where they're close to a path but yeah. if i had a larger garden where i could have paths set out like yours i'd definitely just leave them all in this sort of natural look and this is very similar here this yeah. one's been allowed to do exactly the same um as has the one next door with the pseudopanax oh, yeah. chainsaw it definitely has that jungle vibe and considering you've only been here two and a half years it's it really is an awesome transformation yeah i mean that we've we've been in the house six yeah um everything here all these tree ferns they were in pots to start with yeah yeah um and they were diligently watered as best as possible to try and keep them healthy um and i did acquire a lot of plants during the design stage and I think we've both had a sort of similar route in that respect, haven't we, really? We're sort of building up a collection, sort of mulling over a design, and then actually get to the point where we can finally plant things out. And Well, the miscanthus that we're going to get to in a moment, which yes. you can see across the jungle hut over there, which is a particularly good... It must. It, it has to be about four, maybe five metres tall. Is that one of the infamous Mark Goodlad height guesstimates? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, to be yeah. fair, those are a genuine five metres, I'd say, though. They are massive things, aren't they? Towering over your jungle. But they, they sat in pots until they did go in the ground. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of it has been the design stage. And if you do want a garden to look like it's supposed to be, you need to design it in such a way that, you know, you have to put some thought into it. Um, so tell us more about this little sort of alcove here. So this little seating area here is kind of my um, split between Australia uh, New Zealand and kind of Asia so to speak yes so we've got the Brassopsis mitis which is that is a plant I wanted to focus in on yeah that's looking fairly happy um is as that, well as is that hardy here or is it uh, it has absolutely no protection whatsoever uh awesome. I don't do a thing to it. it it stayed in the ground um it's doubled in size this year um but no it is under the cover 
of um, it's under the cover of these trees here. Yeah, we've got some big there's lime trees up there, holly tree, sycamore, a bit of everything. So they do have a fair amount of shade, but I guess the flip side that is plenty of shelter. Um, I guess the sort of strong dry winds don't get to this part of the garden as much, do they? No. And 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 as you can see on the ground there, there's some pipe works and there's there's a watering irrigation network got, yeah. all around. So everything is very well watered, very well. Definitely. Uh, everything's kept very humid. So um, in, in my eyes, one way of sort of looking at this border, if you want big leaves in your garden, which let's face it, most people do, if you want to go for that jungle effect, you've got the sort of easy options. You've got your hostas and your ferns down there. Yeah. And then what I'd say is like the next level up is like sort of intermediate option. You've got the fatsy japonica, you've got the spider's web over there. And um, which variegated form is that one? Do you know, I can't even remember. There's a few different ones, isn't it, with different names? Yeah. So, so either way, there's different variegated forms of fatsy japonica, very tough, very easy to grow. Then I think the, the next level up in terms of interesting plants, you've got like your Brasiopsis over there, and you've got, is that, did you actually get one? Sina Rhododendron, Grande, Sina yeah, Grande down yeah, there, yeah. which is definitely a cool looking Rhododendron. And as that grows up, the leaves will be almost, what, two, three times that size. They oh, definitely look cool. I hope cool. so, but it's also mixed with, you know, really basic plants. Yeah. So it's mixed with the Asplenniums, yeah, um, yeah. that it's mixed with various ferns, hostas, Trachycarpus in a place where you wouldn't necessarily expect Trachycarpus, but yeah. it's actually one of the healthier ones I've got. And I know um, you had a few rescue Trachycarpus, didn't you? And then uh, absolutely. there's also some that you planted from quite a small size like this one here, and they've they've started growing really well now, haven't well, they? Well, ironically, you gave me some advice a few years back about buying smaller plants, putting them in and letting them grow. That, that sounds very wise, doesn't it? It, it sounds... It, <laughs> Occasionally, it was, wise things do come out of mouth, but it's very, very... At the time, it was very annoying because I wanted <laughs> to buy big plants, yeah, put yeah. them in, but actually, this is a younger plant than yeah. this, and this is yeah. so much happier. Um, and so I do have to bite my tongue and, you know, it, say it, that you were right in that respect. Well, to be honest, I'm the same myself. I bought quite a few big trachycarpus when they were significantly cheaper, but the ones that I'm looking forward to planting now, the more unusual hybrids, they're all small plants, and yeah. I don't regret that at all, because once a small plant's settled in, once the roots are in, they just grow so much happier, so much healthier, and faster, as you can see here. So that's definitely a good visual comparison. It is. Um, it's all very well saying these things. People don't believe you, but genuinely, and and you know what, so the, much better. they're a meter apart, and they yeah. get exactly the same treatment, and yet you've got one that's really is struggling, and one really that's struggling, one that's very happy. Definitely. Um, so let's head around a bit more then and look sure. at some of the palms and exotics you've got around here because so more... it's definitely a random mixture of awesome plants, isn't it? So yeah, and, and again, one of the things that I've really struggled with here, I'm sure that everyone's been on the big plant nursery and seen the ginormous jubea for 20 grand <laughs> yes. um, that we've all had a bit of a look at and thought, wow, that looks incredible. Um, tree dandelion left in the ground, absolutely point blank forgot to bring it in. <laughs> yeah and it's gone crazy. That's a Sontrus, um, is it? So, yeah, it is Sontrus, yeah. tree down the line. Um, so, um, can of Stuttgart, it's its third year in the ground. Yeah. And these always, well, they don't always burn, but they're sort of prone to these little brown spots. But I guess this year with 40 degrees and whatever, any plant that's borderline gonna burn is definitely gonna burn, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and not only that, again, it's another example, canners you generally think full sun. Yeah. These are in partial shade and they look so much better for it. Oh, definitely. I mean, I've got to say that one at the back there, that is almost perfection as far as kind of Stuttgart go. That in this one, country, yeah. it's as good as it gets. Definitely. Um, so you've also got kind of areas that haven't done quite so well, but you've got Jabea here, yeah. uh, Phoenix canariensis. Um, you've also got a Butia here. Um, mm. Echium self-seeded, that's just grown of its own accord. Um, and the worst part for any garden, uh, burr patches, you know, not every garden looks perfect, uh, except for George's, obviously. <laughs> Mine um, is far from perfect, especially at the minute, but... I don't know, the I, garden, I, Gardener's World Show made it look pretty oh, perfect, yeah, there was George, a lot that you, There's a lot you didn't see on there. <laughs> so I've got to say this bit, you're at a very sort of similar stage to my garden at the minute, which is you've got like the main specimen plants in, you've got the Jabea, you've got um, over there, you've got the Phoenix canariensis, and then you've used Persicaria as a good filler plant. Yeah. Because from the house, that just looks like a mass of colourful leaves. You wouldn't necessarily know that that's just a cheap filler plant that pops up. You don't need to do Not anything at all. for it. And, and I only bought I only bought one plant once and everything <laughs> that you see around now, the garden is from the one plant. And we've got Red Dragon, Painter's Palette. Um, we've got a purple few- Purple Fantasy Purple there, Fantasy. You? So you've got three types all together. 
kind of doing their own thing, so quite if, happy. If you don't know about them, this one here is Purple Fantasy. And if you grow it in a quite a bright spot, you get these nice dark chevrons on the leaves. And the one behind it, that is Red Dragon, which is more of a sort of purpley green, isn't it? Depending on the brightness. Yeah. And, and that's been hacked back twice this year. Yes. Um, so uh, they really do take to being, and, and you cut them off and leave them on the ground and a lot of them will, will self, will root yeah. and they'll go for it. It's, it's a good opportunity to say, right, well, if there are people getting into the hobby, of which there are a lot of people, yeah, it's an opportunity to say, right, here's some cuttings, I'll swap with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, or, or even, you know, get some, stick them in some pots, let them grow and sell them on and yeah, yeah. it funds the habit. Definitely. Um, so, so, so on the face of it, this year this looks very packed, and for someone who isn't maybe into the exotic plants, all they see is just plant after plant after plant, but the reality is, I know this, I'm sure you know it, it's all about the big palms there, and while they size up using other quick growing foliage plants to fill the gaps in, to create that pat look, Absolutely. And those can be removed in the future, you can tide them up, or you can spread them around, you can do what you want with them. Or, even, or even, to be honest with you, my hope is that just as everything else grows, Yeah eventually they become the underplanting yeah, rather than the main, yeah. the main feature definitely um, and that certainly is the hope speaking of main features i've been glimpsing around this way but this is a brahira matter isn't it like the one at chris's this one looks awesome and i can see it's obviously raised up there is that something you did as a design feature or is it to help the actual palm itself um both so the so the palm is raised for two principal reasons uh one because they do not like wet feet no um and they want to be kept as dry as possible that is planted pretty much into 50 percent gravel right um, yeah, yeah, yeah. with a top dressing of something that looks a bit better but it's surrounded by weeds at the moment <laughs> don't worry um, a lot of mine is and, and and it's also higher up because i wanted to lift it up because it is such yeah. a special plant i got it from nigel at hardy palms yeah um before it was so difficult to get them in I think they cost me two fifty each. Yeah, so, so it's definitely a sizable investment, isn't it? But absolutely. I've it's got to say, if you want a statement palm, something that's a little bit different, just that blue colour, something we're going to look at probably in another video here another time, when your gardens look up at, at night, those leaves must look awesome. They look incredible. Um, and they, the rings I got from a local, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fabricator. Steel fabricator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're 1.2 meters diameter, 60 centimeters high, yeah. sunk into the ground, 10, 15 centimeters, and I think they cost me about 80 pounds. Got you. So for, for what it is, making it look bigger, you know, most men will know <laughs> making things look bigger is quite important. Um, <laughs> a definite but, priority when it comes it, to the garden. Absolutely. <laughs> Not so much when you're married, but still. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, the fact that it's gone from being floor level yeah. to actually now the top of the leaves are well above george who's eight foot two oh, as we established well, eight foot four i think at the minute yeah um, it, it, no, I it's think definitely it's... a cool palm and i suppose the other thing which uh, i'm sure there's a strong design element here you've kept the theme of the circles going so yeah we're stood in this large lawn circle you've got another circle here in the patio the palms um, themselves the brahias they're raised up in circles it's definitely a very sort of strong design and i think when you're looking out from the house you can see across here all you see is just circle after circle after circle and it's definitely a really sort of strong theme running through the garden i don't quite know where the planets came from um <laughs> i think you just saw some planets and thought i want them i think but... that, i think yeah i think i think that was certainly I, I i was at a garden center and i saw them and they were reduced and i thought right i'll get those spray painted and yeah, yeah. i'm really happy with them but the the whole planet theme i don't know a bit of an odd one but that's an aqua globe yeah, I was looking um, at that. yeah it's awesome isn't it i saw it on love your garden contacted the guy got it sent through and yeah I, I love it and i think that any garden no matter how big or small should have a degree of water element to, I mean, to it i've got to say the sound of it as well it's very relaxing if you can hear it over the top of the sausage dogs because we've got both of ours here and you've got two as well haven't you so yeah there's, there's a proper noise <laughs> there is a, the, yeah they're more like a sausage chorus <laughs> yeah. it's a sausage party inside a sausage party yeah um so anyway we've been <laughs> walking past this section this is the real jungle isn't it to me, this planting is awesome. So yeah, this the, the principal idea of this was kind of the Balinese, Thailand type thing. And I, I wanted there to be a banana grove of which I achieved, I suppose. Uh, and this is another, without, without. another, another example really of um, letting things get on with it. Yeah. So the first year I bowed to peer pressure um, and cut all the leaves off. And we had quite a cold winter 
the pseudo stems got water inside the cuts at the top yeah the pseudo stems froze and everything was cut down to base level now the beauty of that is that six is that 10 muzabaju turned into 70 yeah they all pupped because they all pupped and did what they did but last year i didn't do anything i didn't cut any leaves off in fact if i come in here yeah you can actually see there are still leaves attached oh, from yeah, last winter all the old foliage yeah. it's all still there and i haven't lost any height whatsoever um and the top of some of these paddles is way up there oh definitely um to, to me the thing that's really striking about this border it definitely is full on jungle. No one can argue with that. It is, it is literally a wall of leaves. Yeah. But it's also simplicity. You've repeated. I know I talk about it a lot, but it's hard to do even my own garden. You've maybe got the two sort of feature plants at this end. So we've got the loquat, which you bought as quite a large tree. You've got the euphorbia. They grow ridiculously quickly. Great for that evergreen foliage in winter. So those really sort of anchor the bed there. But the rest of it is pretty much two main types of plant from here anyway. Absolutely. You've got the persicaria at the base there. Yeah. Uh, more red dragon and then you've got musa baju and like you said it's very easy to look after in winter it might not look anything in winter this end here you can see the big evergreens up there from the house you can see those in the house but this really explodes in summer doesn't it and it, it the does. amount of leaves is just really phenomenal and when it comes to the cost side of things persicaria really cheap you can get a few plants for a tenner musa baju um, you can get those around a tenner for a small plant and people just they won't believe how fast they grow and yeah. you can literally fill a bed like this well awesome. like i say last may june it was literally everything was cut down to the ground it was bare soil bare earth nothing was there um and last year we retained the height by not cutting any leaves off of which you've seen the remnants yeah, yeah. and another thing is that kind of gets me um is that these leaves they're tattered they're torn yeah they're blackened and they've been affected massively by the the different types of weather we've had this year yeah this is what bananas look like yeah definitely I, I think it's something when you get into the sort of hobby or passion of growing exotic plants it's easy to sort of baby every plant worry about every little leaf blemish but the reality is whether it's just sort of age or experience you learn to look at the bigger picture don't you yeah you learn to sort of see the whole bed and uh, when you actually see this if i zoom back a little bit next to you those leaves tower over you yeah it really does look awesome and you don't even notice the little blemishes do you and i think the beauty of the of them is that they are warts and all um so there is uh, i i last two years ago there is a couple of red bananas kind of dotted in oh, i can see them just in um, the, yeah, the and there's a really big you can kind of get the top of the leaf over there there's a montbelliardi <laughs> oh wow yeah um, which is yeah, yeah. pretty ginormous and um i last year i had 26 red bananas wow between montbelliardi and morellii um and i lost a roof uh, panel off a greenhouse and yeah. lost 23 of 26 oh, that's gutting isn't it it, yes but it has also kind of formalized my kind of issues surrounding yeah. you don't have to have the really tender plants we all aspire for the tender plants it's the thing that yeah. we all seem to go for yeah. but you can achieve just an impressive a, a, a look without those really tender plants yeah and this is actually something i'm starting myself so when you get into this tropical style of gardening i think it's gr it's a great idea to stick with the plants like musa Baju, the reliable plants the ones that grow quickly don't need a lot of care then as you sort of follow things through a little bit further your interests get a little bit more niche but then i think you actually come full circle don't you and you learn to appreciate just the good doers the Absolutely. plants that thrive without needing loads of care which is uh, another wow. good example here um canna's canna musifolia Brassiopsis is speed. I can say that, that's definitely not an everyday plant, that is it? No, that's a fairly rare one. That came from Desert to Jungle. Oh, uh, right, Rob okay. down at Desert to Jungle. So I also got the macrophylla from. See the stem? Yeah, it's fairly like angry. There's in it, isn't yeah. there? It's an um, awesome thing. And obviously, looking up, we've got the, the big Tetrapan axe, which is one of the best doers, isn't it? Yes. That looks awesome. Which hopefully it'll kind of go through to flowering. Whether it will or not, I don't know. Um, but again, more persicaria around, really good filler plant. Yeah. Um, some tetrapanix babies that you literally cannot help from coming up. They just keep on growing. <laughs> yeah. um, I got actually fed up of pulling them out at one point. Uh, and then again, metapanix, miscanthus, um, and some, you know, 
again another example of buying larger tracky carpus that are nowhere near as happy and as it's smaller just ones. sat there hasn't it yeah um you've also kind of got some shamarops uh, and then this area this little jungle run as i call it was put <laughs> yeah. in that was put in principally for my son to be able to run through wow um and it's pretty dense um so again you've got some giant tetrapanics you've got the miscanthus you've got the fair, bamboos we can show people the, the real scale those miscanthus from here i mean look at the size of them are ridiculous aren't they they are pretty ridiculous that's one that begins with l isn't it is it luta priaris or something i'll put it on the screen anyway so people know what it is they, they have they have really really gone for it so this these are miscanthus gigantis over here yes those are big but if you want an absolute monster miscanthus just look at these ones here they get to around seven meters tall they're literally like a bamboo and when you see them in winter they've got definitely sort of purple stems haven't they while they last they are deciduous and they can spread but to me something that gets that tall in just a summer it's unreal isn't well, they, it and, and they and they have spread and, they, and they've <laughs> yes. spread and they've spread terrifically so <laughs> yeah, um, probably a little bit too well haven't probably they? yeah exactly and when you get in amongst here there are some dahlias in here too um and there's also a lot of different varieties of bamboo and yeah. like i say for two years for everything <laughs> to have grown the way it has i mean i bought these uh, musifolias after yeah. monty did his piece on gardener's world a couple of years ago and they went out of stock the next day yeah um and again they they, they started off as small clumps tiny tiny yeah. bits of rhizome um and it is a i mean i'm not the first person for patience let me tell you but <laughs> yeah you do just have to give them feed water and just let them do um, their thing i've got to say for i hate using the word authentic but i'm going to roll out anyway for an authentic sort of jungle effect i think you've really done well here and when you look at the basis of it it is the same sort of strong plants it's the musa bajou it's the big canners kind of musa folia which is one that's flowering up there? Is that Russian red, maybe? That's or, Russian red. Or one of those sort of big varieties. Yeah. And then the miscanthus. So these are all plants that are really easy to grow. They just respond so quickly to the heat in the summer. And to me, you can't really beat this kind of effect. I, no. I do like the sort of more interesting foliage plants that you got in here. I do obviously have a soft spot for the hardy palms. And I do like the brassiopsis. But to me, when it comes to big leaves, just for overall effect, you can't beat the whole sort of canna banana big grass combo it's awesome no and i mean just as an example it doesn't always go well um we've got a particularly pathetic cleopatra, cleopatra down yes. here that's done really really poorly in all fairness probably should have moved it but do you know what it doesn't all go well uh, even when it looks great oh yeah yeah it doesn't always go well so seeing how packed this little jungle area is we're not going to run through there because we're not toddlers but should we walk around to the other side and show people sure your amazing bamboo walkway so this co this kind of um this idea of this walkway was it's a it's a kind of a route down to what i refer to as wife land which is my <laughs> wife's garden but this idea actually came from my honeymoon in thailand and in the hotel we were staying in just walking down to kind of dinner almost and having just being flanked by bananas um and you know it, it, it awesome. is, it's very dense and again if a leaf gets broken because someone runs through it that's fine that's it is what it is um these air plants also stayed out all winter because i forgot to take really? them in yeah wow. lots of new growth on them perhaps not quite as happy as they could be but You'll see in a moment, I've got quite a good supply of them. Oh, yes, we will go to that awesome greenhouse very soon. I haven't seen anything like it anywhere else, honestly. <laughs> wow, I mean, look at this. This this feels as jungly as you could possibly want it to be. Yeah, and so I've got, some, I've got some Indian doors. And again, it, wow. it's kind of, it's a design statement. It's the thatch grass. It's yeah. big palms, gingers that... I haven't quite managed to get them to flower yet this year. It's not really been warm enough, but... The, they do seem to be one of those plants that they take a while to get going. And I have a lot of people messaging me saying the gingers have got to this sort of stage, a few feet tall, lots of leaves, but no flowers yet. And I think they just need that ultimate size, that big rhizome to really sort of flower reliably. But look at that. Pink China is that one? Pink, chi pink, chi pink China, yeah. Pink and then China. Gale Ge 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 <laughs> Genesis. You're here. the one that begins with a G that's yeah. really hardy. I'll put it on the screen. Um, coleus um and a, a yes. coleus is a big thing for me um yeah. every year i get excited i buy them as plug plants yeah and then actually i would just wish i'd waited for them to come to the garden centers because 
Um, yeah. You can get you buy the tiny tiny plugs that do terribly because yeah. they've, they've been forced. Yeah, yeah. And yet you can get a decent sized one. I mean, half of these I got from the garden centre. Yeah. Probably three months ago because they were reduced because no one knew what to do with them. And they have a really sort of nice decorative plant for going on the edges of borders and Absolutely. just sort of spreading the colour around. Really. Yeah. I mean, that looks awesome through there, doesn't it? And I'll, I'm going to try and attempt to. So this is this is one. Um, Morelli eye here. Yeah, yeah, I can see the red leaves poking through. Um, but I'm going to push back a bit of this <laughs> to it's get madness, to the isn't it? madness. So this is the this is my mon my biggest Monty. Wow. Here, um, which is yeah rather large. <laughs> yeah. But again, this year haven't done a thing to it. Haven't cut anything off it. Just yeah. fed them, and you can see around the base. There's a huge amount of chicken manure. Got you. Um, so feed, 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 water, water, water. Yeah, the bananas are quite simple things. Once they're in the ground and there's no frost, it's just hit all the ghost switches, isn't it really? As and, much food, as much water as you can. And, 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 really I'm, and I have to say, I'm very pleased that that is actually the only one that does need to come in. Yeah, yeah. The gingers will all stay out. Um, What's so, this banana here? Is that something a little bit different? Um, that is... I think it might be Dash Giant. Right, I know it's got that sort of white bloom to it, hasn't it? On the yeah. shoe stem. And, and I, I can't remember, I honestly can't remember whether I brought that in or not last year. I think the one of those sort of borderline hardy ones from what I've heard, but um, I got guess we'll find got, out, won't we? You have got a Sycamensis here. Yeah, Sycamensis, those awesome leaves that just look cool. And that definitely stayed out all year. Which is pretty phenomenal. And uh, we won't actually go round here, but that's wife land through there, isn't it? The, domestic bliss of chickens and all kinds of different crops. Chickens but... and, uh, well, I have to say, it is actually quite good to oh, see. Oh, we popping through. Well, you can do because you can actually get an idea of the size of the bamboos and the miscanthus from this side. When you look across there, those grasses look phenomenal, don't they? Yes. And, and this is an example of how I structured the garden in such a way to create a microclimate. There's a big fence covered in clematis armandii dahlias that are great for cut flowers yeah um and then just a wall of miscanthus bamboo you might be able to see on the far left there's a cherry tree and a eucalyptus yeah yeah, yeah. um so just they are there. so so they really help with the um yeah. wind whipping off the quarry um and they create that protection for the for the bananas so the leaves it aren't shredded looks awesome and to me it's a good example like you said you've been here two and a half years or you've actually been planting out for that time if I look at this wall here, it is just a mass of foliage, but Clematis amandii grows very quickly. Those miscanthus, they're rockets. Yes. <laughs> that eucalyptus is growing fast, the bamboos. They're all great examples of plants that should be used with sort of respect, I guess, but also if you want quick results, if you want that look as fast as possible, you can't beat them, can you? Well, my next door neighbor very kindly built a house within a meter <laughs> yes. of my boundary. So the principal idea was really to try and cover it up as quick as possible, <laughs> yeah. which I think I've succeeded in quite well. Now let's head through and see this amazing greenhouse. So before we get to the greenhouse, let's look at this awesome Hawaiian section. Yeah, so the Hawaii section is kind of based on my love of ticky rockabilly type things. So pizza oven, barbecue, yes. ferns underneath, which haven't done tremendously well. Again, the repetition of the fatia and the bamboos. Um, some great big phoenix palms, which some have done better than others. Um, but again, mixed with euphorbia, mixed with vinca major, mixed with cord lines, mixed with low quads, And that awesome grasses. Garvey, Americana there. Yeah, so again, that's the only other thing in the whole garden that gets any protection. So that gets a, a frame built around it to protect the water from getting in the top. And that's grown, that's like literally tripled in size this year. No, it looks awesome. Um, so if you didn't really know a lot about your plants, you'd sort of see it and just see a massive exotic foliage. But the reality is there's a few sort of more tender or borderline exotics. And then there's a lot of really hardy, just good growers isn't there really to pad things out absolutely it and again it's the beauty of having you know loads of stuff in here that just packs together don't see much soil but again i suppose i see the bits that i don't like oh, it's um, always the way isn't it yeah so cord lines grown up uh low quats again done really happily in different types of yuccas and again they're not expensive yuccas it's yucca gloriosa spanish dagger yeah surrounded by ferns and grasses these are not expensive plants they just look and you've got uh, the Mahonia soft great, caress there. Yeah, and, and again, the, but there's, there's also some cast iron plants, some Aspidatra down there, which is 
for all intents and purposes, it's a house plant, but it's been outside for three years now and it's doing really well. Awesome. I wish my garden was big enough that I needed a signpost to help guests find their way around the place. It's 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 more of a it's more of a help my wife find the garden which find her land. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll actually have a more of a detailed look around there when I come back and look at the sort of lighting one evening. Yes. But uh, for now, I think we need to have a look at this awesome greenhouse. Come on with. To me, a lot of people grow some of the similar plants that you grow outside, but when it comes to the inside stuff, this really is something special. So this is this is probably the the bit I'm most passionate about. <laughs> That's very obvious. Look at it. Um, Look at this. So this this is basically bananas and pineapples with a few things that are, this is someone's old extension. Some. Yeah. Poor lass in Sheffield was told <laughs> that her extension was higher than regulations by 20 centimetres, so she took it down rather than being told to take it down. So, and so essentially, this is like a lean-to greenhouse. You've got a brick wall built up on one side, brick, brick and then wall, you've got an extension yeah. butted up against it. So, this is, so the brick awesome. wall is freestanding with the, you know, with the timber greenhouse, timber shed leaning up against it. Yeah. On the other side is my shed, which I just keep stuff in. Um, Everything's planted directly into the ground. I had to contact a few different people, but most notably Q, because I had to ask them, what do you actually plant stuff into? Yeah. Um, so it's a mixture of composted, uh, composted bark, coir, perlite, and peat-free compost. And, and these structures here, like your sort of tree-like structures? So they are PVC toilet pipe yeah. wrapped in coir with fishing wire and that's allowed everything to grow up through. So you've got the Bougainvillea, you've got some, this is a, a Musa ice cream, Blue Java, um, actually growing passion fruit. A lot of very, very happy, really thick and healthy Spanish moss, and you can see there's an abundance of it. It and looks then awesome, doesn't it? Pineapple beds, so I've got some weird, more, you know, um, Philodendron gloriosum. Wow. This is an Alcantaria imperialis that giant is such pineapple. An awesome plant, that, isn't it? I don't think there's actually any others in the UK. Um, that's one of two in here. Wow. Vander orchids, um, lots of Ripsalis, and you know the anything that I mean. I basically ran out of space in the floor, so I had to go aerial. <laughs> I can't imagine. Why. Um, so, wow. And then, you know, kind of other Philodendron melanocrysum, um, you've got um, Thai constellation, um, basically things that people have got, you know, house plants. That, or the air plants there. Yeah, so the lots, lots of different air plants um, that I've just kind of, this, this whole structure won't go be below uh, 10 degrees. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, what's the sort of compromise between heating and sort of leaving things to it, but 10 degrees I suppose is that sort of happy number, isn't it, for a lot of these? Uh, so it's a borderline thing, and awful things are very happy, and awful lot of things aren't very happy at all. It, but it, 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 I mean, I've lost an inordinate number of plants in here, um, and I don't buy certain plants anymore because I just yeah. know that they will not be happy. Um, but it, I have just let it get on with it. You've got very oh, happy awesome. begonias. Yeah, um, yeah, I can see all the flowers on that. Mm. Yeah, mandevillias, um, collocasias. Interestingly enough, really don't like it very much in here. I suppose even 10 degrees is on the cool end for a lot of them, isn't it? When they're from sort of real tropical places. Exactly. And then you've got the syngogiums, you've got the pothos, you've got kind of like the living wall ideas. Um, and anything that's particularly tender gets butted up to the yeah. heat sink of the wall. We've got 55% shade cloth in here because I found that the, the very first couple of years that I was doing it, everything got, everything frazzled. got really frazzled and dry. Um, what are these plants up here? I'm just looking through at that awesome sort of artificial tree you've created. Yeah, so these are all, again, different types of bromeliads. So that's a Neoregelia, I think it's Hannibal Lecter. This is um, wow. Neoregelia fireball, Vander orchids. Flamethrower palm. Yeah, I've noticed that. Monstera that's starting to get quite fenestrated and large. Um, Philodendron bipenifolium, Xanadu. Splenium fern there. Yeah, money, money plant that's kind of Going a little crazy. bit. Yeah, kangaroo, wow. kangaroo uh, ferns. Um, and then you've also got other things like um, kaffir lime, 
But again, it, it's just an example of, I basically turn the sprinkler on in here twice a week and nothing gets fed. It gets watered when I remember. Yeah. It's probably far drier in here than it should be. But I guess you have to sort of average things out, don't you? Find a sort of level of care that suits most things yeah, most of the year, don't you? Yeah, and again, it's part of accepting that, that, this, that there are very few people in this country doing this. Um, probably because they are not <laughs> idiots. Um, well, that, that wouldn't be the first word I'd use, but I've got to say, when you see these massive bromeliads, I've not seen anything like this in the UK. It really is No, special. and I, I, I was quite lucky. I managed to get these off a guy down in uh, Newquay who was selling them, and he was selling them for a long time because people just didn't know what they were. Yeah, um, and I was awesome. very fortunate. He managed to, he sold me quite a lot of different things that have really filled out so i've got more of them than i know what to do with and anyone knows anything about bromeliads <laughs> will know they split from the base and you get more of them wow so yeah the, but again you've got to counteract it with things that really haven't done well so you've got a you know a staghorn fern here the idea was they're epiphytic they live in the trees yeah it's just not been happy uh, some of these again the bromeliads they want water in the cup and they just haven't been getting the water. Got, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, it is very much a trial and error. Definitely, um, but I've, I've got to say, there's more successes. Or oh, definitely, when I look around here, everything looks incredibly green, and some of these bromeliads are just really incredible, aren't they? Just awesome. Yeah, they, they've very much gone for it. Um, the Spanish moss is it's obviously doing very well, isn't it? They're happy. They're, they're very happy. And there's not, again, there's a, there's a lot of there are a lot of things that have been thrown out that haven't done well and you get to the point where you think oh god but you do it's like the garden outside after yeah. you've had enough losses you learn that you actually don't want to replace plants anymore I you want to stick to what you know will work yeah I'm, I'm the same i think it can easily sound sort of callous but i suppose you sort of go along with your journey don't you you try a lot of plants some of them either take a ridiculous amount of effort they're just not worth the effort they? absolutely and some of them just really struggle with our winters but once you settle on those plants that really do well so outside the musabaju the cannas the miscanthus and inside here all these amazing vines you've got going on all the passion flowers the spanish moss once you found those plants that work really well, you make them a big feature, don't you? And it, the yeah. whole place is sort of so green for it. And, and you replicate it. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You replicate it, you, and outside there's persicaria, there's bananas, there's trachycarpus. There's, they're boring, you know, they're, um, for, for, <laughs> well, but they're not the plants that people are naturally... I mean, yeah. it's all well and good having a forest of Brassiopsis mitis, but it's not really achievable. Yeah, I understand. It's about finding that balance, isn't it, between... A garden that looks like a garden that's not a full on experiment and also something that sort of piques your curiosity in terms of trying the unusual doesn't it uh, and this would be the definition of unusual it certainly is well <laughs> i've got to say we could probably do another full video around here another day look at some of these amazing plants because there's a lot that i'm not familiar with myself but i know you've got to be on today so thank you very much for letting me have a little look around and film some of your amazing garden and uh, we'll see you again very soon to look at the lights thanks for coming round welcome back anytime awesome <laughs> see you later yeah, just leave it there sweet